Hello and welcome to Mayday. Hello, Elena. Hello. Oh, it's it's a different recording button this time. Sorry, that's not relevant to anything. Anyway, well, I was like, oh, I hope it's recording. Um, if it's recording, you guys will know because you'll see us. And if not, we didn't do a podcast tonight. Uh, <laughs> so we are doing today, we are counting down my top five ranked secret societies. And then I'm going to tell Elena... And she's going to tell me if she agrees with that ranking and how she feels. Now, I'm going to explain to you real quick how I ranked these before (laughs) before we get into it. I didn't know how to rank them because first I was like, I was telling William, my husband, I was telling him, I was like, should I rank these by like scary? Should I rank them by like importance? And so I kind of just did both. So it's kind of like. Yeah. And also like how how influential they are like their importance and and things and that'll make sense when i get to number one um i do have a little disclaimer i want to say real quick though so and i you don't know about this but i'm just gonna tell you too and all of you guys um i have been talking to some masons lately and they are very nice people like all of them that i've been talking to so there is an air when i talk about this stuff obviously it's partly for entertainment purposes um, that I'm like, Ooh, spooky. And I do think that like anything secretive is something that people are afraid of. Right. So like fear, and, of, the unknown. fear of the unknown, right. It's like fear, you know, being afraid of the dark or anything else. But he pointed out something that I think is important to note. And he said that a lot of the conspiracy theories around like um, the Masons or the Illuminati, which was just a secret society that didn't even last that long, just, so, you know, um, he said a lot of it is really, like, closely tied to anti-Semitism. And that made me feel kind of like, yeah. So I just want to put it out there that, like, if you guys have noticed on my TikTok and stuff, I don't talk a lot about conspiracy theories. I talk about the history and what we actually know as far as the facts. Right. So sometimes I think it's okay to throw in a little fun conspiracy theory, but I'm going to try to be really mindful when I do that, that I'm... Because if you think about the connections between things people say about like the Illuminati and anti-Semitism, you can see where he's coming from. So um, I'm going to try to be cool about that when I talk about stuff. I don't think I've ever said anything that could, that is like that, but because I always just give, no, I always just give the kind of the history and like, Ooh, it's secret. So it's a little spooky. Um, But, and I think some of the conspiracy theories are like, Like, okay, I'm going to just give one example before we get started, but like George Bush, Skull and Bones, that'll make more sense when we get into this. But like, that's not harmful. It's George Bush. It's not, you know what I mean? (laughs) He can take a ribbon. So we are going into this with what we actually know about these secret societies. Um, And I might say now there is a conspiracy theory but they're always playful ones. It's never coming from a bad place. Yeah, he he pointed that out. I talked to a guy, and I meant to get back to him because I talked to a lot of different people that are in secret societies, and he was like offered to do an interview, maybe even on camera. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, he was really nice. He was just saying like you have to remember some of these things that people say are you know whatever. But we always just do the the facts as we know them here, and nothing nothing harmful. So I just want to put that out there. All right, so number five, we're counting down from five to one. Number five is the Odd Fellows. Now, that's pretty low, <laughs> um, and it's no it's no shade to the Odd Fellows. It's just that I feel like their overall messaging is pretty just nice. So let's give a little backstory on the Odd Fellows. So the Odd Fellows seem really shady towards. Freemasons, okay? It almost seems like an alternate fraternity. Um, They are much more forthcoming than other secret societies. In fact, some of these groups don't even consider themselves secret societies. Um, And they don't think that being secretive helps in any kind of intellectual capacity. That's even in their missions, like one of their mission statements. They were established in the 12th or 13th century, roughly. The exact date is unknown. Uh, very beautiful esoteric art. If you've seen the TikTok I put up, they have like the, you know, the eye of providence, the all-seeing eye. But then they'll have a lot of hearts in their um, art, and so 
that's really because their um their core tenets are friendship love and truth so that's their yeah so they're kind of like hippie <laughs> like i was to say they're not they're hippie types it seems like they don't seem oh also i want to say about the odd fellows very inclusive one of the first very like went out of their way to make sure that they were not excluding anybody um so some secret societies have like separate branches for women and you know things like that um the odd fellows were always like integrated in things especially since being in america so their symbols the triple links each link represents friendship love and truth um but the thing that people do find disturbing about them and kind of creepy and the reason that they are on this list is that um i want to say it was like 10 years ago people started finding skeletons in the walls of their lodges that one if i was getting them mixed up but no yeah that's that one that's them and um i i don't know i, I talked about this on tiktok and here's what's interesting is that i am i had a lot of people who agreed with me and were like yeah there there is um there are definitely skeletons i can't tell you exactly how they're used but they gave me the general thing that the skeletons are used to like memento mori basically to confront the your mortality um so i think they probably have to um it's rumored that they have to sleep with them like overnight <laughs> like a real skeleton just so you guys know we're not talking about like um, a halloween prop like an actual actual human remains construction workers were working in these old buildings um that used to be lodges and they were pulling out like literal kits with candles and actual human bones could you imagine like you would think you were like in a horror movie yeah I was probably cursed like oh my god they got me yeah, I mean, that's literally... Okay, so there was another one. I read all these different articles about it because um, I read all these different articles about it when I was researching this the first time because I was like, what? And one of the guys, he said he knew some odd fellows, which I had never even heard of them. Like, I was surprised how many people had, but like, um, he said that he knew some odd fellows in town and that they gave him some old coffins they had and he was going to use them for a halloween display in the front yard well one of them was empty but another one when him and his daughter were carrying it an actual skeleton fell out of it <laughs> and they turned it over to the police now also though what's kind of creepy about the odd fellows is that um they seem to have a way of like talking their way out of situations that are a little unsavory like with this, there was one of the articles I read. I think it was the LA Times said that <clears throat> that they just basically told the police it wasn't their business that they use them in initiation rituals. Yeah, and that that worked for them. Um, <laughs> that, that they use them in initiation rituals and that they didn't really feel like it was anybody's business. So well, skeletons identified like how like what? Well, see where are they coming from? I think like the implication was that they told the police where they were getting them, but they didn't want anyone outside of that interaction to know because they really wanted to keep their secrets. Um, <laughs> Lord of the Rings is just. I was, like, I was thinking they could <laughs> keep their secrets then. I could see it in your face. That's why I. Yeah. Thought. <laughs> like. <laughs> Now I have a TikTok that I filmed and that I was going to use to like let people know. Like I always try to have something put back to like tell people that we made a video, right? And about a story. So by the time people are seeing this, they'll have seen that. That's why it's okay. People send me stories and emails all the time, and I that's why I said that at the beginning because I do genuinely try to take people's advice, and um, I think that everybody you know should be mindful, especially of things like that. Um, th but what's interesting is that people send me stories about their experiences. Now, for legal purposes, I have no idea if they're true. And they definitely, none of, look, people talk to me all every day and say that they're members of secret societies. I have no idea if any of them actually are. I'm just going off what they're telling me. But um, I had somebody who asked to remain anonymous say that they used to work in a nursing home <clears throat> that was owned and operated by the Odd Fellows, And that it was like, this opulent building for a nursing home which was strange 
and that it was like up on this like hill like a Vincent Price movie <laughs> um, and that she described them as being very very old um, when they would come in when they came in nobody was allowed to speak to them except for two members of the food like the that worked in the kitchen staff so that they could bring them food the CEO and and no one else was allowed to like speak to them really or talk to them that they would go in the boardroom um, and she said that she quit that nursing home because it the care conditions for the people that lived in it were so poor and that she had heard that when people asked the odd fellows about it that um, that they were very threatening so um, yeah but again on the other hand I have no idea what's true and what's not and a lot a lot a lot of people also said that the odd fellows do a lot of good charity work and that's on their website and stuff too so that's just kind of both sides of that is that i've heard that they're really nice people too so i mean it's like anybody else maybe this particular group is strange it's always a little odd when it's a secret <laughs> all right so putting that one in at number five how do you feel about so far number- yeah yeah that's my my oh, least the- see the other choices first I was say that's as, as far as like the least important maybe. Uh, number four, I put the Ordo Templi Orientis, which I just think is like wild uh, secret society. If this was based on like which one is most out there, it would be number one, but <laughs> it's not. It's also like influential and in, you know how they that's the strip mall, right? Yes. yes. So the. Ordo Templi Orientis has its roots in Freemasonry as well, uh, but they're an occultist group. And the thing is, a lot of secret societies are based on some form of like faith or just, you know, kind of generic Christianity, but they are not. They're an occult group. Even though they were based on uh, Freemasonry, they had a split, right? So, yeah, and I put on here, that's just bizarre to me. That's random. That's this is random. It's in Oakland, California, and it's behind a strip mall. They have a temple there. Um, so they were founded at the beginning of the 20th century by German occultist Carl Kellner, refined by the Aleister Crowley, the famous occultist. And uh, Aleister Crowley, he refined it to include what is called Thelemic principles. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, because I knew nothing about Thelema, Thelema. I knew nothing about it until I was reading about it like two days ago. <laughs> so if you're curious what it is, Thelema is a mystic occult philosophy. Um, they practice ceremonial magic and, and it's said to have inspired Wicca, Satanism. Their main tenet is do what thou wilt. Y'all have probably heard that before. Love that. Yeah, that comes from uh, Thelema. Thelema. I'm not quite sure. Um, sex magic and chaos magic. So, I- <laughs> no issues so far. <laughs> well, you know what's weird? Okay, so not to get too off subject. No, I'll wait. But I do have one more thing. Okay, so that's a very short snippet about what Thelma is. If you want to look it up, there's a ton, ton more. Basically, Aleister Crowley had an experience in Egypt that like formed the whole basis of the book of law he called it so and a lot of yeah modern like magic practices derive from it i didn't want to go too far into that because i don't want to strain all the way off but it is really interesting and i'll probably be reading about its history more so they are said um the ordo templi orientis the secret society is said to summon angels and demons in their temples practice astral projection and participate in something called Gnostic mass. So Gnostic mass is similar to a, like a, it's like a dark Catholic mass. So they ingest the blood of Christ and things, but they feel that they um, like actually become godly and godlike and can do things like astral projection and summoning angels when they participate in Gnostic mass. Still see no issues. <laughs> It sounds like a really like so like fun time. Kind of. Like I would go to one. But do you ever feel like, look, because me and you are like, we're kind of playing because we're like, you know, basic goth chicks. <laughs> and we're like, ooh, magic. Ooh. 
But like, do you ever feel like if you actually went to this, like pretend that we got invited to come sit in on the Ordo Templi Orientis and we're like, okay, well, yeah, I want to see that. Um, and we go <laughs> and like these people are trying to like astral project because we're also <laughs> both <very> like, <laughs> like level people. Do you think they're like taking substances and that's why like that's but- how they're doing? Well, something you told me like 10 years ago really stuck in my head. I'm going to try and see if I can say it like similar to how you put it. Because it was, we were talking about drinking and it's like some people can get drunk off like one drink and some people it takes like 10, but the person who's getting drunk off the one drink is, um, letting themselves like go more that's not how you put it quite but they're like accepting they're like flowing down the river instead of fighting it so like like they must be doing it's like i don't they're rolling with it basically i guess that's what i'm trying to you you said it excellent and i'll never remember but i always felt that sentiment like if you're trying to get drunk you can get drunk off one drink, and if you're not, not trying to, it could take, you know, four, five, six, you know, I guess that's letting yourself turn over to it, I guess, is what I'm getting at. That sounds like the kind of conversation that I would have had 10 years ago, and it makes <laughs> sense that I don't remember it. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> um, I was like, but you know, it's really interesting, like, what what sticks in our mind from people, yeah. right? Because, like, I I was telling William yesterday... You were talking about someone specific, and I know who it is, but I'm not into calling people out across YouTube, the world. Yeah, I know. I, um, yeah. I, you'll have to tell me, because I can't remember that, but I was just telling William something, like, something my mom said a long, long time ago, and how much it stuck in my head and how I always remembered it. And she'll, she'll probably ask me. She'll be in the comments like, what did I say? <laughs> but uh, no, she said there was something she said a long time ago. And then I don't know why I remember that so much. And it just like kind of sometimes plays in my head. Like it's weird. The, but I guess what I was saying, though, was like, okay, so I, I am a sober person um, for I actually am. So um, unfortunately, I can't have a glass of wine anymore even. But like. I wonder what it would be like to go to like one of their particular, not just a secret society, but this one. I feel like it would be ridiculous and I would not probably hold any like truth to it. But if we got in and we went, I'm doing it all. Like (laughs) (laughs) I want to try everything. I'm turning myself over to it. I'm actually, I'm summoning the angels and demons, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't like, want to say so- drinking the Kool-Aid, because I don't want to, you know, but. What if, what if you go participate in the whole thing, and uh, what if we went together, and right. you participate in the whole thing, and I do not, <laughs> right. and then I watch you ride the route, because you're, like, drinking whatever they offer, right. <laughs> and you leave and I'm like, man, Andrew wouldn't have been happy about any of that. <laughs> and tell him like it's a secret. So yeah. right. <laughs> but we, but the secret society is very it's sacred. And yep. and you know what I'm referring to is the part where it talks about adult magic, is what I mean, y'all. Right. Not, not having a glass of wine. Yeah. Um <laughs> okay. <laughs> um if so we like, if we get in, I'm going all in, like, 100. percent So here's the deal: if you are a part of the Ordo Templi Orientis, we just want to like, I just want to observe. Elena wants to participate in the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying so like, it's so funny because so many of these groups are just, from my understanding, like old men that do charity, and that's why I wanted to point out too, like the like things about how I thought that was really insightful. He said there could be like harmful stereotypes because I do believe that most of these groups um, are just like harmless. Cause as if you guys follow me and as Elena knows, cause we're, you know, friends. Um, 
Uh, I had a chocolate realistic part that looked very realistic on my TikTok this week. And the people, not, not many people. Huh? It was beautiful. That thing is beautiful. I don't want to eat it, but I kind of think it'd be awesome to do a TikTok just like eating the heart. Well, like I kind of Targaryen style. That's what William said. Like I kind of want to put on like a flowing something and like some kind of big Renaissance crown and just like eat it. Um, oh, I get your hesitation that you saw the company. Uh, I can always get another one, but man, that thing was kind of pricey, which is fair. She. That's that's what I was getting to. How like was that like a really expensive thing? Like would it be worth it to like keep the wine? that you got from them and then just order another one for like a really cool video. Um, some, I have spent money on silly things in my life, but, at, and not even that silly. Cause like, again, it's art and it's beautiful, right. but like, I don't know if I have the, I don't know if I would feel okay where I'm at financially. Cause it was, it was what? 25 pounds. I think cause it's British. And then the shipping's a lot too. Cause she packages it really securely. Like you gotta think yeah. that thing. Food coming. That thing came from England in the, and then made it here in the Alabama sun in May and was not melted at all. So it was yeah. very nicely um, preserved and everything. But um, my point was, though, that I had a handful of people that were accusing me of eating babies and talking to people who eat babies. So I definitely see where, like, some of these people are coming from, like, chill out. Like, it's... <laughs> Kind of like fraternities, you know what I mean? Like, keep your feet on the ground. Um, I think that they have secrets, but I think a lot of times their secrets are tied to spirituality or, you know. Um, I know from what I've read Probably about these, definitely, you made these. Definitely. <laughs> That's why they said chocolate hearts from famous chocolatiers, because baby eating. I don't know. <laughs> um, I was, what was I going to say? Um, uh oh the illuminati i the little bit i know about i actually don't know a lot about the illuminati because it wasn't even a secret society for that long it's kind of weird that that's the one that's persistent but the little bit that i know about them is that um that they were really just trying to hide from like a heavily conservative society and be able to openly discuss like the free flow of ideas right i mean i'm pretty sure that's like the whole thing was that they wanted to talk about like, intelligent matters without being accused of like witchcraft and and it's kind of ironic that that's pretty much what's happening right. now sure, like our minds now that's hard, to, that's hard to comprehend we're so used to like free speech and everything but we gotta understand like back in the times when these societies were created that stuff was not okay you could not express ideas that were outside of the norm yeah and also, um, oh, I totally blanked. Sorry. Great content. <laughs> I totally blanked on what I said. Um, oh, I had a point. It'll come back. Number three. Oh, we're glitching. But you know what's weird? Last time you glitched and I had you start over in the video, it didn't glitch in the video. It just glitched for me. So I'm losing you a little. Oh. Can you hear me good? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do it, but, and hopefully it'll sort itself out while I'm going. So number three, I put the orphanage. Yeah. The orphanage got a pretty high ranking here just because of their, for me, it was their dedication to their whole, their whole shtick. Okay. Um, their whole dedication to me made them a higher ranking so if you guys are if this is the first video you're seeing from us which i doubt it is but it, like because i feel like you would only find this if you went down the rabbit hole but if this is the first video you've seen from us the orphanage is behind a famous mystery called the mayday mystery um, a student at the university of arizona named brian hance discovered that there were strange and cryptic ads appearing in the college newspaper the arizona daily wildcat and he just became really intrigued like who is placing these full page expensive ads and when he looked into it it was a lawyer named robert hungerford and he said that he was placing them on behalf of a group called the orphanage now what i know about the orphanage is that they are heavily protestant christian 
that they place these esoteric ads in well now they place them directly online since COVID. i don't know if they're going to go back to the university of arizona at some point but they when COVID hit they started placing them just directly to the internet um and it's a very long story we have a full video about it if you want to go back to it but basically i think they're kind of doomsdayers i think they're also kind of um I think they're also kind of like old school orthodox and they don't like the like new treatment of Christ's image and that they, they want to like enact actual effectual change. And cause Bob's a lawyer. Um, he's been known to like protest the death penalty and like, there's something in here, like where they might be radical hippies who are trying to like change the world is my new theory. Um, but we all, all we really know for sure is that they're definitely strongly Orthodox Protestant Christian. Um, say something and let me see if we're on the right time frame now. Uh, something. <laughs> Can you hear me right? Yeah. Okay. Because, like, you're moving real slow, like you're underwater for me. So I was just trying to make sure. Okay. So the orphanage, probably, if I didn't know as much as I know about it, would have got a lower ranking but it got this higher ranking because I know how dedicated they are to it. So if you guys are not familiar, I'll quickly go over this because we have an hour and a half video about just this. It's our first, first thing on this page. If you're curious, I started talking about the Mayday mystery online and they started contacting me and I've been talking to them for three years on and off. They recently sent me that chocolate heart. Um, they sent Brian who discovered it, lots of packages so they're just a very dedicated uh, secret society. But uh, again, I don't think we've ever mentioned talking about May Day is you weren't just talking about May Day at this time. May Day was like one of the many videos that you had made about similar like topics. But that was the one that actually like talked back. Like, yeah. So you were making a lot of different videos about different mysteries and things like that. But the reason that that one's become so big and like your life and by extent, like to me is because that's the one and of all the videos that you made that, like I said, that actually like came became something. So, yeah. And to be honest, like it's a weird thing to say maybe, but I actually kind of owe them a lot because um <clears throat> that was because, like your video because of uh, them that was like your biggest video because of them like pushing it forward it's the biggest video we have on here and every time i talk about it on tiktok people are like what and you know yeah. recently uh red web covered it recently and they talked about me in the last like 40 minutes which was like a big thing and it, it, yeah they they literally helped me and they and Bob, Robert Hungerford, he's never been anything but like nice and gracious about it, even though he really actually has kind of helped me have something cool to partake in. Um, I'm I'm anticipating people being mad at me because I'm getting my fingers tattooed on Tuesday. And one of the things I decided to add was a little all seeing eye like right here. <laughs> uh <laughs> and that's just to commemorate my like weird year with secret societies. I know the actual black story of the all seeing eye is not nefarious at all. Um, but I know that people are probably going to like flip. Um, <laughs> the, just the ones that already would, you know, but, Oh, so this is what I started to say about uh, the limit principles and stuff, but I decided to wait. Do you remember those people that contacted me who claimed to be opposition to the orphanage? Yes. Okay, well, the one person said, consider us your friendly neighborhood oracles, right? And I never knew quite what that meant. Well, when I was reading through all this stuff about, like, Thelema, Thelema, um, she, uh, a lot of the stuff they said came to mind because it was in this. Like, they signed one of the emails, do what thou wilt. Um, yeah, um, Alistair Crowley called himself... I'm probably going to get this wrong because I just started researching this one. The Aeon of, or of Horus, like Horus, the Egyptian God, because of his experience in Egypt. And that was in one of the things they sent me to. So I asked Bob, I said, are they like Thelemic? Are they in the, you know, this? And he 
he gave a cryptic answer. He said, the opposition is deeply evil, and so is Thelema. Mm. So I don't know if, I don't know. So that's mm -hmm. that. Now we have number two, Skull and Bones. Okay, that's my number two ranking. Yeah, I was wondering who was going to be number two. I forgot about Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is the one that, when people do talk to me who claim to be members of secret societies, they tell me that that's the one to be afraid of. And we talked really briefly about Skull and Bones um, in our Hotel Zaza video. Now, we talk, uh, as I said earlier, okay, there's all these like theories about like being influential and, you know, and some of that can get a little close to just being bad. But that guy, that Mason I talked to, he said if anyone was actually doing those things, though, it would be the Skull and Bones, in his opinion. And that's not the first time I've heard that. I've had at least probably five different Masons say that they kind of side-eye the Skull and Bones. And in this case, it's more because there are, were actual powerful members in it. So a little bit of backstory, the Skull and Bones is a secret society at Yale. Um, they have a lot of aliases, which I feel like is sus. So aliases include the Order, Order 322, and the Brotherhood of Death. That's a lot of different names that they call themselves. Founded in 1832 with 14 members. Many powerful members, including George W. Bush, that's the one that made a lot, it got a lot of press in the like late 90s, I think it was, uh, early 2000s, that George Bush and his father have been Skull and Bones. I think he was a legacy. They call the members Bonesmen, or initiated to the Order. They meet in a tomb. Um, the t <laughs> yeah, they meet in this building that's an actual tomb. I read this whole expose of people who like were trying to really uncover like what was going on in there. And one of the things that they mentioned was like um, that it's kind of campy, almost like the Adams family house. Like there's like plastic skeletons and it's all it's fun. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a frat mixed with like funny, scary, like um, and I watched that movie, The Skulls, which has a, like really awful ratings um, from like Rotten Tomatoes and stuff. I liked the movie because I thought it had neat secret society Easter eggs and stuff, but it was very over the top. I think they're probably just a frat and you have to think that like anyone who goes to Yale is going to be powerful by default, but right. that's true. I, I think the reason that like the Masons and, and all these other people are like, yeah, they're actually a little... It's because that still doesn't stop the members from being actual powerful members of society who would then get together and, like, okay, they might be fellow bonesmen, but they're also, like, the leaders of the free world. You know what I mean? So that is a little different. Oh, William's always coming home while we're filming, so that that's like a... Um, so anyway, they meet in a tomb... There's a place in the tomb in the, called the Inner Temple where they um, are actually initiated. Conspiracies include, and again, not endorsing conspiracies, just telling you what they are, that they are Illuminati. Of course, that's kind of always oh. there. That they founded and control the CIA. And that comes from the fact, that one's a little substantiated, that comes from the fact that one of the famous members was uh, James Jesus Angelton famous member and head of the CIA. Mm. Member... Do you know where that tomb is? That they no, meet at? It's I'm at Yale. Located. It's at Yale, I believe, but I don't know um, exactly where. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, members are said to have to... I'm trying to think of a really like family-friendly way to say this. When members are initiated, they're said to have to get inside of a coffin um, and show themselves a good time. Um, while oh. people, yes, while people stand around and listen to them recount their history with partners, that's what their initiation is. I would do anything to see George W. Bush's initiation. <laughs> <laughs> that would make my whole life. So I'm not exactly sure where the tomb is. I know the, huh? Oh, we're talking about the tomb, but then also conspiracies. 
Oh, right. Well, the CIA thing. I mean, again, it's like you can look at it from the spooky angle of like, oh, the whole world's controlled from the inside of this tomb, you know. Right. Or you look at it from the logical angle of like, these are all rich, privileged kids that go to one of the most powerful institutions. And then they link up and they put their big brain. Well, I'm not going to give them all having big brains. So. privileged together. There you go. They put, you know, they put this money, power, family history situation together. And you end up with, of course, some of the most powerful people in the world. So I do think Skull and Bones is a little, it's like spooky. But then like, I had a little bit of a shift in that when I read that article that said, uh, that said that. It's all campy and like supposed to be funny. Oh, could you please give me a drink? Diet Coke. Um, because you gotta think like with the Odd Fellows, I mean, it's not supposed to be funny for them. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. For them, it's like a serious rite of initiation where you have to like, and I've been told this by several members of the odd fellows all these people are anonymous and again i can't verify that they're actually members but that they have to lay with an actual skeleton all night and like think about the fact you know memento mori remember you will die so if skull and bones is doing it in a funny way then you could say that the odd fellows are kind of creepier but they're not i don't think powerful exactly and that's what earned skull and bones the number two spot because I felt like they had more, they're more well known. Most, not everyone's heard of the Odd Fellows. I was about I feel- to say, I spoke about uh, when I was telling someone about the story of the Hotel Zaza at work, I mentioned Skull and Bones, and they immediately knew who Skull and Bones were. Mm hmm. They're definitely like one of the, if not the most well known, one of them. I decided to take a big bite of the sandwich while I'm talking. They're not eating this time. No, we're going to have dinner after this. And I don't, I'm the type where if I eat before, like pretty much directly before a meal, it will, like, I won't want to eat. I like it that. If I have like a small snack or something before like dinner, it'll just ruin my whole dinner. No, I totally get that. Um, I was really looking forward to cookies, and then I guess they didn't have any. It's so sad. But I have a McChicken. It's good. Um, We were going to film the unboxing that was on my TikTok. I mentioned that. And um, the reason Elena um, ended up not being free, and that night I had a whole bag of Butterfinger Bites, which would have been more camera appropriate than a McChicken. (laughs) But... This is what you guys get. Um, all right. Number one. What do you think number one is? If you had to guess. Freemason. Freemasonry. That's right. Because super if you guys. Old, super powerful. Super exactly. even well known. But then also not much is known. It's just the common. Common one. Well. Yes. And if you notice. <clears throat> All of these other groups, their root, their basis, it all leads back It all leads back to Freemasonry. That's the roots of even the ones that are like really out there, like the order. Mm-hmm. It all started with Freemasonry, even the occult practices, and then they split. Now the entire history of Freemasonry is too much to to go over. Right. Do an overview. Yes. The Freemasons are going to come for me if I don't get it perfectly right. Y'all, please be patient with me. <laughs> I'm actually kind of new to reading about Freemasonry. So, the first thing I want to point out is that when you go read, like, even on their official websites, they, they put up right away, we are not a secret society. If we were a secret society, the worst kept secret in history which is fair but oh go ahead 
I say, there's a beautiful Freemason building in downtown Nashville. And anytime we go there, we, uh, based off where we like typically like to park and where we're going to, we always walk by it. And Andrew always says something like, oh, there's the Freemason building. It's got their symbol and stuff right on the front. I'm trying to see if some plain sight type of thing. Oh, yeah. They're, it's more like I think they're protective of their secrets. And I've had some, I've actually asked some of the people that the Masons have been talking to me, like, what's safe to talk about? So I think I'm all good here. Um, I just don't want to make them mad. They're all, they're always nice to me, you know, but basically too much to cover, but the history begins with stone Masons. Um, so they do emerge during the Middle Ages. Formation of the first Grand Lodge was in London in 1717. Um, important documents and concepts include the Regius poem, the Golden Ratio, and Euclid's 47 problem. So, here's what I figured out. And it should be okay because I figured it out on my own. <laughs> when I started reading about this the other day, the advice I kept getting, I started reading some of these things and like, okay. So I started reading about Euclid's 47 problem, right? And I won't get too deep into that, but that's like, that is almost neat. That's one of the biggest cornerstones of Freemasonry. And it's all about this divine equation and how to make perfect right angles and how the Egyptians used these perfect right angles in this equation to build the basis of the pyramids. And how those pyramids align stars, um, you know, it basically mixes construction or masonry with these kind of equations, like Euclid's 47, the golden ratio, which if you guys are not familiar with the golden ratio, it has a lot to do with like, um, hmm, in Renaissance art, the golden ratio is simply put is usually a small, medium and large focal point or areas in a painting. But it's also an actual mathematical equation that's, I think, similar to pi. Um, so basically they're, they're tying together masonry or construction with, uh, all knowledge being connected to like Genesis and God, and that these grand structures are able to be built because of God, who they call the divine architect. Now, uh, yeah, so that's really, I think a lot of masonry now, uh, Masons, you don't have to be a Christian to be a Mason. You just have to be some kind of spiritual. You have to believe in the divine architect, but you don't have to be. It can be anything. As long as you believe that the earth, I think now this I'm not positive, but I think as long as you think that the, you know, that everything was designed by this grand architect or God. Oh, God. Now. What are your thoughts on Freemasonry? Have you ever known a Freemason? Have I ever wanted a Freemason? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, no. <laughs> have you ever like met one? Um, I feel like some of it, I feel like one of Andrew's relatives was one, and that's why he's interested in it. Uh, so I think he's had a relative or something that was one. But I don't I think, I don't think any of my relatives or anything, uh, have been, but I see like the logo on people's cars all the time. Someone, when I was working at Hardee's, used to come in and when he'd hand me the, he was a regular customer and we'd hand me the money, I'd see his Freemason ring on his hand. When you said, Have I ever wanted a Freemason? I thought I was about to get a whole better story. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Hold on. Okay. Like, I like come across to them or at least people bearing their symbol uh, in passing which I'm always just like I don't take people really too much at their word like if you have a Freemason bumper sticker I'm not going to automatically assume oh there's a Freemason in that car I could be like well someone might have just thought that symbol looked cool and ordered it off Amazon or something um well, but the guy with the ring, I'm pretty sure he was a Freemason. Well, from what I understand, um, from what I understand, it's not super difficult to, to be a Freemason. 
some chapters allow women, but that's very rare. Usually they um, have, have to be in an offshoot group called the Eastern Stars, which is like the women's, which that kind of segregation. Um, it's like, okay. And I think I mentioned this in one of our other videos before. So this same guy I talked to, he said that he understands that that's a little like problematic. But on the other hand, it's a space for men to kind of work through their emotions. And I don't see any problem with that. Um, so it's, it's weird. I mean, I guess do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody, but I hope that they're at least trying to be, you know, inclusive and all that stuff. I don't know exactly. So I don't want to speak on it, but, um, so I have honorable mention, the order of Gimbal, which I just really think is neat. Um, so the order of Gimbal, the reason it doesn't have, it didn't get its own ranking is because it's one of like a million random college secret societies. Skull and Bones, by the way, is two. It just got famous because of George Bush and there's so many conspiracy theories around him. But there are a lot. I mean, okay, before I read that, just so you know, there are a lot that I've talked about and a lot that I haven't even re read about myself yet that I... It barely scratches the surface on a lot of those. Which it is. Okay, so... It like, there isn't a secret. There's not a lot known. I mean, you could talk for hours about theories and histories and accounts and everything. Well, one of the ones... Okay, so I had the Seven Society as a possibility on this list. And they are a secret society at college as well. And the reason I crossed them out, there's so little known about them that there's nothing to say. So I was like, meh. Okay, so they all we really know about them is that they're obsessed with the number seven. They give donations to the school in that amount. And that a wreath of black magnolias in the shape of a seven is placed on members' graves when they die. And that that's how they're revealed to be members, right? And that I think the the college clock tower chimes seven times. But there's not a whole lot known about their practices. What I like about the Order of Gimbal is the story. So I put it in here. So University of North Carolina Secret Society, originally called Order of Drumgul, named for a student named Peter Drumgul, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Now, some fact checkers think that Peter most likely just picked up and moved to England, but legend says that he was unalived by an opponent and put under a rock in front of Gimbal Castle. So the thing, the legend is that he met to have a romantic duel with this other student over this girl he was in love with named Fanny, and that it's funny because he probably didn't die. Um, he probably went to England. So they met and they're supposed to have had this romantic duel and he perished and was buried under this rock. So they meet at a castle. It's beautiful. If you look up Gimbal Castle, um, they changed the name to Gimbal from Drumgul because they wanted it to be creepier. So it's um, the quote from the founders was in accord with midnight and graves and weirdness, which touches right touches me on a very deep level. Um, their official symbol is a devil, and the thing is really cool. You know that tattoo you have on your leg? Yes, it looks almost just like that. So I'll send you a picture, but it it I looks. Said really no, cool. I've forgotten it. Huh? I should have said no. I've forgotten it. You know that tattoo on your leg? No. What tattoo on my leg? Right. What? Doesn't what, if that's, exist. what if that's why you have it and you just never told me because you're... <laughs> Ooh. Covert. Covert. <laughs> I love that tattoo. Or what if the artist... It was like... That tattoo you're talking about was drawn by a specific person um, in Florence. What if she's part of the order and is like hiding symbols in her flash? Because it was a piece of flash off the wall that she had like hand drawn. He said... William said she's Fanny. Um, she would. Have, <laughs> she's like two, two hundred years old or something. I don't even. I don't yeah. think I wrote what this one was founded actually. But I um, love that. She she died last summer. Robbie is dead. He died last summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, she'd have to be very old, and also. Um, she couldn't be a member because they don't allow women, like most of them. Now, 
I didn't put this group on here because they seem more of like a jokey group than an actual secret society. And I could do a whole video on it because I'd love to even learn more. But the Merry Widows. Did you see my video about the Merry Widows? Oh, yes, I did. They were listed as possible for this, but they are an all-female secret society that pretends that all the wives of Joe Kane, who founded New Orleans and Mobile, which, by the way, y'all, we're from Alabama. That's where New Orleans was actually founded, Mobile, Alabama. Um, just in case some of y'all are watching from other states. <laughs> what did I say? And now I gave New Orleans credit for no reason. Mardi Gras was founded in Mobile, Alabama. Oh, yeah. That, that's a very, like, little-known thing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, look, I've never been to either one of them, so I'm just messing, like, I am I have no leg to stand on, but I'm sure New Orleans does it, you know, bigger, and, like, I've, you know, but I've heard it's good in Mobile. Market. I've heard it's good in Mobile. We got a little small one here in town, too. I like it. Oh. Oh. Quick note. I should never have tried this. I don't know how people do this. <laughs> you talk for a minute. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know what you're going to say. We're talking about Mobile and Mardi Gras. And... I was going to talk about you getting vaccinated. I took too big of a bite. Oh, me getting back. Yeah. Um, May 24th is my second shot of Moderna. Moderna? Yeah. <laughs> so that's June 7th. Well, like, I'll be fully, like, antibody juiced up, super saiyan. <laughs> yep. Well, that's exciting. I was going to say, you know, I know you guys have been awesome that you still, like, watch us and hang out and eat and talk to us and 